Howdy folks, we're in mid-October here and we got another busy day ahead. I'm going to start out with washing some of these filthy machines. We got pretty dirty with all the work we did. So I already cleaned off the uh, bean head on the trailer, but we need to get the rest of this cleaned up. So let's get the old hose going here. Then after I get this cleaned up, uh, I've got some plowing to do. I don't think I've done any of that on camera yet. We're going to plow up that little field that we're going to be putting some weed into. And then I've got the uh, dealership bringing some propane over because we have burned through the propane that was in the dryer. And yeah, we're going to need some more. So luckily I'd already bought a, a pool. I think I bought 20, I don't know if it was 20,000 or 30,000 liters. And once we go through that, we'll have to pay, but... Some of it's already paid for. Uh, but they've got a big old, uh, I don't know if it's a 6, 6R, 7R, something like that. Big old John Deere. He'll be bringing a, a tanker over. Get us all topped off. So I'll be keeping an eye out for him. He was supposed to be over here about 9 o'clock. So. Why aren't you getting clean? That's some stubborn dirt. There we go. I think it's just about got it. Yeah, that looks a lot better. How about you? You're doing all right? Yeah, the old Mahindra's doing good. Put that hose back. All right, so I'm going to get on down to the uh, field there where we're going to be plowing. I am starting the engine. Calm down, Mahindra. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll meet you over there. Yeah, well, speak of the uh, dealer, there he is. He's headed on down. That guy spilt some corn or something there. Have to get that cleaned up. Yeah, we'll just follow him down. See, hopefully he doesn't run into the bridge. It's a little narrow down here. I'm sure he's familiar with the area, it'll be fine. Uh, I've already got the tractor down here with the plow ready to go, so we just need to get her done. Let's say weight limit 20 tons. You should be alright. Not much of a span here. Get in there with that big trailer. Uh, I guess he's going to go for it. <laughs> yeah, it's his trailer. Alright, good deal. Let's get some propane unloaded and we'll get some plowing done. You're out of the way. If I can find the uh, fill valve... Actually can't remember where the uh, where the valve is. Maybe I have to do it from the tractor. I'll try that. Hopefully he doesn't mind me driving his tractor. There it is. Yeah, we'll just have that fill in. Then uh, Steve, I think his name's Steve. Maybe he ducked around back to take a whiz. Steve can take the uh, propane on back when that's done offloading. Let's get to some plowing. We're going to get this plowed up. And uh, yeah, we're going to put in wheat, like I said. And I don't have a cedar. I was looking at my uh, my planter over there. And it is, yeah, it's just a, it's just a drill. So it's set up for, uh, you can do either corn or beans. I think maybe a sunflowers uh, but I've been keeping an eye on the uh, the used market we'll see if something will hopefully turn up we can plant is it is it through November yeah we've got 
through the end of November, if we want to get it the winter weed in, or we've got all spring basically. March and April to get in the ground, so we'll see. Something will surely turn up. In the meantime, let's put the old uh, 1586 to work. What are you saying? I bet if we put it in gear, we'll have better. Uh, I don't want don't want this in the tour. Let's try it in the torque. So there's two different ranges here. Let me see if I can. Can I show that to you guys? Yeah, so I don't think I can zoom in. It's got two different ranges here. Uh, it's called a torque amplifier on these on these uh, internationals. Put it down a torque amplifier. I think that'll be better for plowing. And then uh, we'll try high one. We'll see how we get along. Yeah, I think as long as we're not going uphill, high two is probably a little better rev range. You don't want to have it completely wrapped up all the time. Let me just double check. Yeah, I don't have that on create fields. It was just, it was knocking back some of that grass. Which is fine. And we'll actually use the whole field this time. All these fields like he was in from the grass, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get every last inch out of this. <laughs> so this would be a nice little stand of wheat. Looking forward to getting some chickens on the farm. Alright, let's see if we can kick her right around. He's uh these internationals are pretty good turning radius. Notice that with the 786 as well. Now I'm cheating a little bit here with the, the drive straight button. Yeah, she seems pretty happy in second. Down in the uh, torque amplifier range. Even the revs right around 2,000. I think that'll work. Sounds good. I, I love these old, old tractors. The new tractors are nice and all, but the old ones just sound like they're working hard. Sound like they're doing something. Better get a picture taken too. We're coming up towards the end, yep. Let it roll to stop a little further. There we go. Actually, while I'm down at this end, let's go check on uh, the propane here. Make sure we're drying corn again, now that we've got that offloaded. And I don't know how much propane that holds. I'm guessing about 20,000, maybe. Oh, did you stop overloading when I got out? You did. Well, son of a gun. That's silly. Must be some one of the newfangled safety systems. Well, it might just take every little bit of this 25,000 liters. That I didn't expect. Okay. Alrighty. Well, let's send Steve on back over to the uh, dealership. And uh, I believe I've got a little bit of more propane bot over there. 
We'll let him go do his thing. And actually, let me make sure the dryer started again, and then we'll get back to plowing. So we ended up with just almost 100,000 liters of soybean. Not bad at all. And the corn dryer is running, and we got, yeah, we got propane. We're ticking through the corn. Still amazed at how quiet this corn dryer is. That thing should be howling. You got a maker, Steve? He's taking it easy up out of the hill there. Watch it on that narrow bridge. If we see him heading up the hill, then he made it. Oh, yeah. He made it. Old 6R probably dragged the wagon right, right, through, the, <laughs> right through the bridge without even slowing down. Uh, pretty powerful tractor. It has got nearly as much character as the old 1586, though. In my opinion. All right, off we go. It's, it's said cloudy in the forecast, but it's been a little hazy this morning, but other than that, it's, it's a beautiful October day. Let's take a quick look at the forecast. Supposed to be in the high 60s this afternoon. And we've got an unusually warm December. I don't know what's going on in December. End of November, beginning of December. What's this? 62 degree difference in one day? I don't know about that. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to get a little more plowing done. And I'll check in with Steve here in a bit on the phone and see how much propane, if any, we've got left over there bought and paid for. And I'll see you all in a bit. The plowing's going great. Uh, unfortunately, that one tank of propane is all I had. I thought I had bought more, but that was it. Uh, but I was able to buy another 40,000 liters for uh, 879, so not too bad of a deal. Uh, so Steve has got the tanker filled back up. That should, that other 25,000 liter load there, should pretty much fill the corn dryer. And it looked like, based on the numbers, that should get us through this year's crop with some left over. So, it is what it is. We had to spend a little money, but we'll make that back on the corn sale, in theory. Even with the low yield, I think we were looking pretty good. So, he's going to get that topped off for me. We actually take a look real quick at the field here. Now that counts all the fields. Yes, I can't look just at this field individually. All right, fair enough. Just the way the uh, farm set up. I think we'll be all right. I might run one row across the end there when we get done. Just about done with the plowing, though. Goes pretty quick when you're not spending all your time turning. You can just go back and forth. Of course, the other big plow job I've got is that cornfield up there. So I'll get that done, and then I'm, I'm thinking with the way the temperatures are, we can get some soil samples in for winter. 
and I can lease uh, the equipment for, I think it was less than a grand. It's way, more, way cheaper to do that than actually buy it or pay somebody to come out and do it. So I think I'll just lease the equipment for like an hour or two and see how quickly we can get through all the fields. So we'll get that coming up and then we'll have some good info on the soil. I can't remember if I showed the full yield map for the cornfield, but it's it's pretty pathetic. Come on, click off of there. So yeah, it's it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, I still don't know what happened here with that bean field, but something something happened with the yield. And then we got nothing off of here for yield for for some reason, even though we took some beans off there. No idea. Stuff happens. Actually, I think I'll start up here. Just make a swath down through there. It's kind of a funny shape down here at this end. I don't know, I don't know why he rounded his corners like that. Try to turn a little gradual here so I don't rip a shank off or break my three point. There we go. I will say this plow is working great. More of a subsoiler, I guess, than a plow, but gets there in the end. Not sure if Steve's offloading. I might have to give him some better instructions. I think when I was in the tractor, I had to pull forward a bit. We get down to the end of this row here, and we'll fix Steve. We just got a, a few little bits, and we're done plowing here. No idea if we're going to need lime or or what. But if I can afford it, I want to get the uh, the best yield possible next crop on all these fields. All right, let me run over here and fix Steve. Do 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 do. Yeah, I think I think. Uh, oh, it's not Steve. It's Sally. Hey, Sally. I'll just top up here in the cab with you real quick, and we'll get you fixed right up. You actually need to be for just a little bit. Leave propane unload needs to be up here just a little closer, get you in the right spot. There we go, all fixed. And that, ladies and gents, is how the sausage is made. <laughs> Oh, now we got Susan in there. They keep switching back and forth. I love a mod that, like, kept the same AI consistently. I don't know if there was anything like that out there. It used to be, I think, I don't remember if it was 17 or 19, where you had, like, fixed AI helper names and stuff. It would be consistent. Yeah, now that we got her in the right spot, she is off to the races. Good to see. Let's get you like that, and I think I'll make a pass down through here just to clean up some of this nonsense. You can tell with the duels we're getting a lot better flotation. They're not leaving nearly as deep a tracks as the front of the tractor. Of course, I do have quite a bit of weight on the front of this old girl. Back her down a little slower here. Wrong button. Oh, 
Might be tearing up a little grass, but we'll get her done. All right, not into the ditch. thing I noticed is the transmission on this tractor works better than the 786 for the AI. When they were carding, the AI had a lot of trouble for some reason switching between high 2 and high 3. They never would switch out of high 2. They would just sit in there redlining at like 8 miles an hour. <laughs> so a lot of times I would switch to the tractor and, and bump them up a gear. And once they were in 3... They would go on up to four. I don't know why they get stuck at two. Uh, but they didn't seem to do that on this tractor for whatever reason, even though it's basically the same transmission as far as the gears. I think this has one less gear, maybe. But I don't know. I, d I don't want to get to the point again where I was with 17 quite a bit as spend more time fixing mods than I did playing the game, so I'm just uh, resisting the urge to edit everything. It's going to play it as it is. If it don't work, I'll throw it away. But I'm liking this tractor pack. Working pretty darn well. There we go. We have a, a field plowed. And this creek is dry, so I'm going to nose down in here and get turned around. I assume this runs at some point, but it's bone dry right now. All right, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if Steve's coming back with any more. We'll see. Or Sally or Susan or whoever's driving. But we got corn drying now and we'll keep an eye on the market. I think it was next uh, summer or something, wasn't it? When the prices were good. We'll keep an eye on the bean price. And we'll be firing up the old international truck at some point and hauling to market. So that'll be it for this one. Like I said in the beginning, I'm going to keep my eye out for a good used cedar. We can just get a little bit of wheat planted now and then when we need to. I don't want to buy a new piece of equipment. I don't think it's worth it. But I'll keep an eye out on the used market. We'll see how that goes. In the meantime, I'm going to head on back to the farm. Leave the Mahindra here for now. And it is a tight squeeze getting across this bridge with this plow so we'll see how that goes got to get lined up right in the center grease up the sides and you can make it <laughs> yeah we got her yeah this only goes up to third the 786 has got a fourth gear. <laughs> 